Hey everyone, and welcome back to BMX News. This is a weekly BMX news show where I talk about everything that happened in the previous week within the world of BMX that I think you guys might care about. First of all, I'm super sick right now, so I'm gonna try and make this one short, sweet, and to the point for you guys with the top four things that I found to talk about that happened in the world of BMX in the past week. The first of those being that the Simple Session 2020 course design was released for everyone to see, as you're seeing right here on the screen. It's got a box jump, it's got a whole bunch of street stuff, it's got a random volcano in there, and it looks like this course is designed to just keep people flowing around and keep people moving. And after looking at it for a second, it looks like it's gonna be really great for the street side of things because all of the street stuff is super compact with a lot of different places to turn around and get right back into the street section. But when you look at it from a park perspective, everything's kind of around the outer perimeter of the course. So it's going to be interesting to see how the park contest goes and how those guys ride it because if you're not going to take that outside line with the box jump you're gonna have to pedal through all of the street stuff to get from one side to the other and in all honesty in looking at this this kind of looks like it's lacking a little bit in the park side of things just because there's just a box jump a volcano a few different hips and then everything else is just like quarter pipes and wedges and then there's all of the street stuff so it's going to be interesting to see what happens regardless. It's the 20th year of Simple Session, so I'm sure they're gonna be doing it big. And there's actually a video over on Simple Session's website that kind of just goes through some really fast highlights from 2000 all the way up till this year. And it's pretty cool to see all of the different people who are in there and all of the different places that they did it. And one thing that I didn't know before watching that video is that Simple Session in the past had some outside stuff as well. So if you guys wanna check out that video or check out a few more pictures of the course, there's links to that as well as all of the other things that I'm going to talk about today in the description down below. And then the next thing that I want to talk about today is Dan Lacey's Federal FTS DVD section that I just finished watching and oh my goodness. Honestly, it's not even a bad thing that I'm sick this week and only talking about four things because this is the only video that needs to be talked about this week. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's two things that are prominent within this one. One of those is gigantic 360s and the second is curved rails. I think this dude just hit every single curved rail that exists in the entire world. And we all know Dan Lacey for his gigantic 360s. This video part does not disappoint whatsoever. He honestly could have made it just the 360s and just the curved rails and it would have been just as good of a video. There was even at least one curved rail to 360 in this video. And I gotta admit, there was at one point in the video that I was disappointed that he hit this curved rail that was literally a complete circle and didn't grind the whole thing when he hit it. But that was more than made up for by the banger of this video, which is like a 20 or 30 foot diameter curved rail that has an entrance and an exit that's just like a couple stairs he jumps into it grinds all the way around this rail and then jumps out of it exactly where he jumped into it you're gonna just have to watch the video to see what i'm saying but there is no doubt whatsoever that this is 100 the video of the week maybe even the video of the month or even the past couple months because i just really enjoyed this one and i think that all of you will as well and then comes something that i don't know anyone could have saw coming in that fit has just re-released Mike Aiken's S3.5 frame with all of the exact same dimensions and decals as they did way back in 2008. 12 years ago almost this frame was released and they just brought it back for a reissue. And like I said before and as far as I'm aware they're releasing this thing with all of the same geometry, colors, and decals that they did back in 2000. And like I said before, and as far as I'm aware, they're releasing this thing with all of the same geometry, colors, and decals that they did back in 2008 when this thing originally came out. And that's not it, there's more. They're also re-releasing the Aiken stem along with it in gold with black bolts and black with gold bolts. So I'm really curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this one. And if any of you are planning on picking one up or already did, let me know in the comments down below. Also let me know down there if any of you had any of the original Aiken fit frames. I personally had the S2 
a long time ago, but I had it for such a long time and that was a really great frame. So like I said, I'm curious to hear if any of you had one and what your thoughts on all of this are. Then next I want to talk about Diggs 2019 book that was just released. It's issue 99.99 and there's a ton of stuff in this book. One highlight of the book and one thing that I really thought was worth mentioning in here is that they named Pascal LaFontaine the Dig 2019 Rider of the Year. If you guys don't remember, I talked about Pascal's video recently. Pascal is a rider who lost part of his leg but didn't let that slide him down it didn't stop him from filming one of the best videos that came out in 2019 this dude absolutely sent it and he's 1000 deserving of the rider of the year award and honestly i'm really glad that they did this because it's just it's not very often in bmx that we see someone who isn't like super directly involved or celebrated within the mainstream win something like this. Normally it's someone who is very obvious, like Kevin Peraza winning the 2019 Vital BMX Rider of the Year. Yes, Kevin deserves that 1000%, but to see Dig go on the outside and not pick someone who is shoved in everyone's face all the time and someone that not everybody would think of, but is genuinely deserving to win this spot is just awesome to see. A few more highlights of the book while I just scroll through the contents. We've got Kink Champagne, Breaking Glasgow from Dig, Odyssey, and BSD, Vans Peru, Matt Hoffman, Never Meet Your Heroes with the Never Part crossed out so it just says Meet Your Heroes and just a ton more in here. It looks like it goes all the way up to page 162 which just says 2019 in photos, the ones you really want to save for print. Pretty awesome that they're doing this one and keeping print media alive in BMX. I know that you've all heard this before, but it's just cool to have something in your hands that you're actually looking at and actually touching rather than just clicking through on the internet. So let me know in the comments below if you guys are excited about this. This is also the last thing that I have to talk about this week. And moving into next week, which is the last BMX news video of 2019, let me know what you guys think of the format. If there's anything that you guys would change or want to see more of, or want to see less of for that matter, or anything that you think I suck at or anything like that. Just let me know your guys' thoughts because I make this news video for all of you, not for myself. So I wanna make sure that I'm making something that you guys are interested in and shows all of the things that you want to hear about within the world of BMX. That being said, I wanna thank all of you for being here and watching and watching all the way to the end. I'm gonna go lay back down and get better. And hopefully if you're new, you'll hit the subscribe button so that we can see you tomorrow for another video. Thanks again for watching and goodbye.